we've had a wonderful day at the prayer center. It was a, a call it European day. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Ruthie from Ireland spoke uh, eloquently. I thought it was just fabulous. And uh, it's wonderful to hear people from other nations who are facing different things than we face in our culture. And it, it, I think it, it broadens us and causes us to mature uh, faster and also encourages us. And, and we really do. Uh, you know, we're spoiled. That's just, you know, we're spoiled. We eat filet mignon every week, you know. And then when our pastors from Germany, it was so, I've been teasing Tim all day, you know, because he was supposed to have the service. And all, all he really did was, he was the maestro with the mic. He would hand the mic. And I said, Tim, you never spoke more eloquently. <laughs> but it was fun watching the Holy Spirit work, you know, and... Uh, and so it, anyway, and I know people, uh, I've already heard one report that one person that's very close to me that said, I, I was changed today. Being a normal Christian is no longer enough. I've got, I've got to press in and find my call. You know? Well, praise, praise God. So then getting ready to speak, and I said, you know, I'm thinking, what can you add after, a, you know, what, what am I doing here? Maybe I'm supposed to just hand the mic out. <laughs> But, 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 Doug's, but Doug says about all you could do would be to re-digest. And that, let's kind of do that a little bit, okay? Uh, one of the phrases that really stood out to me this morning was, uh, how did you phrase that exactly? The gospel, the unpreached gospel is no gospel at all. Did I get that right? And this is the year of power, which also means it's the year of action, because to just sit at home and pray, it, when I, I don't want to belittle that. Sitting home and praying is what got us where we are. Thank God for the teacher. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But he has been alerting us for quite a long time that some, a big change was coming at the beginning of this year. And if it's the year of power, then it also means it's the year of stepping out beyond your fears. Stepping out beyond your self-imposed limitations. So listening, first let's talk, let's redigest Ruthie for a little bit. And how many of you recognize some of the tactics of the enemy? Well, you're too old. Uh, I, I, I don't know why I would think anything like that, but yeah, I've heard that one before, you know. Uh, your body's given out on you. I've heard that one before. Uh, you, you're not smart enough. You've not prayed enough. You've, you've, the list can go on and on and on. But every one of those was a lie. And even a wolf in sheep's clothing that came. And I, the thing about a lot of times in those situations, the person themselves have good intentions. They don't realize that they're being used like that. But they are being used like that. And uh, you have to be careful. That's why God gave you the Holy Ghost. He says you don't have to be deceived if you listen to that unction that comes by the Holy One on the inside. So Ruthie had to get past all of her fears she had to get past her physical limitations. And as you can tell, standing there today, she's still battling some things. Amen. But did she not deliver? Did, see, when we can do and the message is, if she did it, so can you. And, and, and an unpreached gospel has no power. How shall they hear without a preacher? So this is the year that we have to deliver what he has given us now. Go ahead, and I do have a scripture for this. Acts chapter, you know me, I'm going to have scripture. Go to Acts chapter 3, and this is the healing of the blind man. Excuse me, the healing of the lame man at the gate beautiful. <clears throat> and the thing, it is, the thing of it is, it so encourages me that it's Peter that is used in this early outstanding miracle. And some of the lessons that the Lord has given us this year, I understand even better than I did in the past, that Peter really struggled with some things. His vision of what Christianity was to be was quite uh, faulty in the beginning. And uh, it took a long time for his vision to come in line with that of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if those messages are available uh, that we've taught this year on that. So to find Peter, especially being one of the ones used here early on in this miracle... And uh, Marvinus is here, who has a, uh, her and her husband, they have a, a daughter named Victoria. 
good name, victorious, with, born with a birth defect. And we're believing for a complete restoration like that never happened. That my, even modern science, quote, modern. Well, I wonder what the Lord would think when we use the word modern. <laughs> Which doctor, I don't know what he would think <laughs> you know, compared to his knowledge, you know. But modern science has no answer at all. There's nothing. Her daughter was born without a fully developed brain. Okay, I don't know how else to say it. It's a birth defect. But they don't have any way of fixing that. There's nothing in the natural to do. But now how many things were possible with the Lord? Oh, all things are possible to those who believe. believe. Now, we may get into that in a minute. I brought a few notes about belief here. So that's, that's one of our in-house cases. And I've talked with Marvinus and Malcolm many times. said, you know, revival might as well begin at your house. Might as well begin there. Just The Lord giving her a new brain, I don't think that's a problem at all. Do you? It's a, just a birth defect. And that's one of the reasons I love this one. This one is a birth defect also. So let's, let's read it again. It's good for you. The word of God's always good for you. Acts chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, now notice, lame from his mother's womb. Now, if you write in your Bible in the margin, you should write birth defect so that you don't forget that. This is a birth defect. This is no different than Marvinus. This man was born this way, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked alms. He was, he was begging. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them. But now notice he's still expecting to receive something of them. But he thought it was going to be a, be a coin or money or some, something like that. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. And here's the phrase, but such as I have, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up. This is going to become a word, a byword, a watchword for you. And... Immediately. Now I thank God for progressive miracles. I don't care. I don't really care how God heals me as long as he heals me. Amen. You know, y'all, I've, I've given my testimony. I've had him heal me supernaturally. I've had him heal me slowly through doctors. Uh, but I, as long as I get the healing, that's what matters. But the revival that we're talking about, I think more and more and more, immediately is going to become... A watchword. So that the people can see. That's the, and, and the people wondered when they saw the lame to walk and the deaf to hear and the blind. They wondered. It's a sign and a wonder. Uh, one preacher said, signs and wonders are the dinner bell. It draws the world to look. Look what's available, see. Then you preach the gospel and get them saved. So immediately his feet and ankle bones receive strength. Now, let's stop there for a minute. See, I, I, was, um, I had polio, most of you know, when I was five years old. And I was paralyzed on my right side for six months. Uh, it's really, I, you know, I was only five. I still remember it. It's, it. it's a strange thing for a little boy not to be able to move his fingers. Can move them on the left side. Can't move them on the right side. Same with my toes. I couldn't even open and close my eyelid. And I was in that condition and for six months. And so there was no running, jumping, playing, any of that. Uh, and atrophy set in pretty heavy. My, my muscles shrank. They literally shrank. Can you imagine what this man's legs must have looked, at, looked like? Having never walked. Having never walked. He's a, he's a fully grown man. Those little legs had to be like just tiny and instantly either the Lord strengthened those tiny legs or instantly the legs developed muscle but either way he did something that was absolutely quote impossible in our realm say it with me the things that are impossible with man 
are possible with God. All things are possible to him that believes. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the key phrase here is because in the second service, then it was so wonderful when my, my oh, I'm sure I won't say this right, Matthias and Gabby, pretty close, okay. Matthias and Gabby uh, were sharing. And the emphasis there is I, I love watching the Holy Spirit work, especially when I know there was no collaboration, there was no no comparing of notes. It was such, the, it was like the same service, part one and part two to me. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, you have a lot. You have a lot. Quit believing the lie. Quit believing you're not ready. Quit believing you're, you're uh, not equipped. Quit believing you're too old. Quit believing all of those things. You have something. You have something. Such as I have. And I was thinking, now here at the prayer center. You have a lot. You have a lot. You may not. Be, I don't know of any of us that are, quote, fully into our calling yet. I don't know that I'll ever be fully in my calling. But you know what? I have some things. I have some things. I have them now. We all have the name of Jesus. In my name, those that believe in my name, do we have his name or not have his name? In my name, they shall cast out devils. Devil, you should never fear what the devil's doing. The devil should fear when you wake up every morning. The devil should fear. In my name, those that believe, not just the fivefold, those that believe, they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They'll drink, if they drink any deadly thing. Now, that, that, we're not preaching snake handling here. <laughs> no, it's just, it, what's, the, what's the New Testament example? When that snake came out of the fire and bit Paul, right? Now, so if, if you're in the Lord's service, and something like that happens, you have chapter and verse to nullify that poison in Jesus' name. Just shake it off in the fire like Paul did. And have faith that it will not harm you. Amen? Yeah. And if they drink any deadly thing, even if somebody tries to poison you, it will not harm you. You have a lot more than you think you have. You At the prayer center, are you kidding me? People are lost in our neighborhoods. Our neighborhoods have become... Uh, America is not the America I grew up in. The America I grew up in, you knew your neighbors. You knew the, their, their names. They would probably have you over and, they, and they'd give you a cookie out of the tray of cookies. That, nowadays, you'd be afraid for your kid to take a cookie from a, a neighbor two doors down. See, America's not the same. That does not relieve us from sharing the gospel. You have a lot more than you think you have. You have knowledge. You have the baptism and... Listen, I'm just going to... If you are praying, now this is, I'm sad to say this, and I'm not being accusatory really, but it's just the truth. If you are praying one hour a week in other tongues, in other tongues, I dare say you are praying more than 95% of the pastors on planet earth. Yeah. Now, so those of you that are praying many hours a week, you have a lot more than you think you have. It is time to, how do I say this the way I see it? What I see is us bowing finally and saying, Lord, use me. Lord, use me. That's, what, that's, the, that's the image for tonight's message. Lord, use me. I have a lot. The, the, you have, if you've read Dave's book, if you've read The Walk of the Spirit, The Walk of Power, and you can quote any of it, <laughs> not quote, but if you can relay the truth in your own words, of that book, you have knowledge that will help so many people that they've been bound by well-meaning pastors, but they might as well be in, in bound in prison with bands around their mind. And you can set those captives free. Not if you come in a preachy superior way, but if you come in a loving Jesus way. You know, sinners flock to Jesus. Why don't they flock to the church? We're not presenting the same Jesus. It's just real simple. We're not presenting that same Jesus. And I'm talking to yours truly too. But we ha you have knowledge, the baptism in the Holy Ghost. There's not a person that I'm seeing, I'm looking. 
Everybody, I, I know you well enough to know every person in this room, you can not only lead people to the Lord and get them saved, you can get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. And many, and many of you can lay hands on them and see them healed. In Jesus' name. It's time, if it's, going, if it's the year of power, it's also the year of action. That may be, the, that, may be the, some, that title might be something like that. Such as I have, give I thee. You've got the name of Jesus. You have got the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ regarding the new birth. You have the truth about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. You have, you have access by prayer to all the resources of heaven to set the captives free. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say these things. The life, so what do I have? The life that he quickened you with is the exact same life that he quickened the Lord Jesus with when he raised him from the dead. The first time Dave preached that, I wanted to go slap him. Because I want to think, I want to excuse myself by thinking Jesus has something more than what I have. And he is God in the flesh. Don't write me letters, I know that. But he didn't do anything as God in the flesh. And the, it plainly says in Romans 8, the life that he quickened him with is the same life that he quickened you with. You have this, we have that same life. Think about it is right. That same life on the inside of us. And the enemy says, you, you, you can't be used. You're powerless. You're, it's just lies. It's absolute deception. And it's time for all of us to rise up such as I have. Give I thee. I can give my neighbors the knowledge of Christ. I can give my neighbors the baptism in the Holy Ghost once they're saved. I can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I'm telling you the insane are going to be let, just set instantly back in their, their right minds. Because a lot of times that's devils. Jesus, you know. We have a lot to give. If it's the year of power, it's also the year of action. It's the year of action. Boy, that's... I'm, I'm, preaching, I'm preaching good right now. So I'm preaching good. So. All right, go to Matthew 13, 58. We're going to look at some verses on unbelief. I don't think this will take real long tonight. By the way, we have an updated uh, confession sheet later if you all need one. Yeah, we've updated it a lot. We changed the date. It's 2000. Nothing else changed, just the year 2015, because we're going to have what we say. I'm not going to change a th not a sentence in there. We have everything we've been confessing all these years. You know, Abraham had to come to the place where he would say about himself what God said, right in the face of 100% contradictory circumstances. I am the father of a multitude. Every time that he said that, here he doesn't have, speaking of him and Sarah, they had never had a child. Now, he had had a child through Hagar. But he and Sarah had never had a child. Yet God says, the time has come now. Change. Your name is no more Abram. Your name is Abraham. That, yes, sir. God, that mean does. Before the change in the natural came. A change in the realm of the spirit came. And how that change came was the vision and the words. Remember, he took him out, took him out. Remember there, see, Abraham was 99 and Sarah was about 90, right? Okay. They've been married a long time. What image was on the inside of him? An empty crib. Empty crib for decades. God knew this miracle is not going to happen unless he does something to change that image. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hope has everything to do with what you see on the inside. You need to start seeing you laying your hands on the sick and seeing them recover. You need to start seeing your neighborhood turn to God. You need to start seeing whatever it is he's been talking to you about. See it and see it and then say it. Because first off, he took him out and he said, now look at the stars. Abram, quit looking at that empty crib. I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little. But that's what he was doing. Quit looking at the past. Quit looking at what has been. I want you to look at what shall be. 
Your children shall number as these stars of heaven. Can you count them, Abram? No, I cannot. That's the vision. We have got 8 billion people on planet earth, roughly. The tiniest fraction, legitimately born-again Christians. Our children shall number as the stars of heaven. You hear me? Our children shall number, and it's really the promise to Abraham fulfilled to us, shall number as the stars of heaven. So first you have to change the vision, but then also you change what you say. I like how Ruthie started off the service, and I think it was Romans 4, 17, how Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You remember that? Well, he changed Abram's vision, and then he changed what Abraham was saying. Some people come against confession. I think they're going to have a hard time preaching that to Abraham. Abraham knows. It wasn't until God changed what he was saying that 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 miracle took place. I am Abraham. And he had to start saying it before there was any physical change in his body or Sarah's. I am, when you're attacked and when you're attacked and with healing, <laughs> Lord, I need to be attacked with healing right now. I, <laughs> when you're attacked with sickness, <laughs> when you're attacked with sickness, you need to start saying near the healed. Call yourself what God says before there's any physical change, and then you'll have that physical change. I visited people in the hospital at times and and they've been sick for so long. And you're trying to get hope in them. Because if you just getting them to say the words alone is not enough. And I'll try and find out what did you like to do before you got sick, you know. Oh, I used to like to snow ski. Can you see yourself doing that again? And sometimes they say, no, I don't think I'll ever do it again. And I say, well, see yourself. Yeah, you're going to snow ski again. Or whatever it is that they like to do. I've got, you've got to get hope in them. Not just mouthing the words with no, no, the words alone won't work, but the vision alone won't work. It takes both. And then get them to start saying, I am the healed. I, I, will, I will ski again, whatever it is. I am, I am healed. Well, what God's after this, at the beginning of this year of power, he is changing what you see. He is changing what you say. I pray the Lord set a watch on each of our lips. And every time we speak that unbelief, that saying, he, last Sunday night, remember he changed what I was saying two or three times. I was going to say it, and he had me say it more forcefully in a now way. Not, not we're going to heal the sick, we're healing the sick. That type of thing, see, that type of thing. This is the year, this is the time. How Abraham staggered not in unbelief. Well, let's look at unbelief just a little bit. Did you ever find Matthew 13? Did I tell you the verse? Matthew 13, 58. And we're not going to look in the context. Did you know the word unbelief only occurs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's only, but there's only 16 times I was surprised. And some of these are all connected, like you know, the verses are close. In the whole New Testament, 16 times that word occurs, unbelief. I was surprised. Now, unbelieving might be another way, you know, but just the word itself, unbelief. So let's look at it. I mean, Matthew 13, 58, you know the story at, about at Nazareth. And he did not many mighty works there because of their what? Because of their unbelief. Now, it's not unbelief through Jesus, right? But because of their unbelief. You know what? The way Dave normally teaches that, he says, they didn't bring the people to be healed. That is why it didn't bring them. Because they didn't think anything would happen if they did. Give the guy with the lunatic son some credit. That's why he said, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Well, what he means is, if I didn't believe at all, I wouldn't have brought my son here. Amen? Unbelief affects the ministry. Okay, let's go on. Go to Matthew. These are sequential. Now go to Matthew 17. This is verse 20. This is the first quarter of the year. What is the emphasis on, people? Fasting. This is the passage that Dave always, always gets us on. This is that man with his lunatic son that brought him to the disciples. And they did everything that they had normally done. I'm sure they shouted, they jumped, they commanded. They did everything that they'd done before, but this devil didn't come out. 
Jesus was not happy about that. He says, how long am I going to be with you? How long am I going to have to do this for you? I think he's asking us that right now. Hmm. But anyway. <laughs> when are you going to start doing this? You know? well, so he cast that spirit out, and later on, privately, don't ask him publicly, privately, they asked, why, didn't it, why couldn't we cast it out? Why didn't it happen when we prayed? Boy, he doesn't mince words. Verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, because of your what? Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And here it is again. And what? Nothing shall be impossible to you. Now a little further down, he says, now this kind cometh not out but by prayer and fasting. When he says this kind, he's not talking about this kind of devil. He didn't say the problem is it's such a big devil. No, the problem was unbelief. Yes. So what comes out through prayer and fasting is the unbelief. Even when you don't think you have any. They didn't think they had any or they wouldn't have asked the question. They thought it was a big, nest. They thought it was a big devil or something. No, it's unbelief. All right, come on over to Mark 6. I should do this too. Mark 6. And by the way, okay, yes, sir. <laughs> Keeping me on a short leash. Now, see, this is really the same story. That's why I had me turn here. Look at this. You'll see their unbeliefs. Back up to verse 1. We're going to look at verse 6. But he went out from thence and came into his own country. So where, he, where is he? He's in his, his home his his hometown, his home area. And his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, Well, from whence has this man these things? What wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. In other words, they knew him. This is that little Jesus boy. We watched him grow up. He played in the streets. He's got brothers and sisters. Why, what would make him special? They're trying to get us to understand the unbelief that was there. See? But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and in his own house. How many of you are the black sheep of your family? <laughs> I am. God love my, my relatives on my dad's side. They're nearly all of them Southern Baptist and tongues is of the devil. <laughs> and they would all love it if I'd give up this nonsense and just go pastor a nice little Baptist church somewhere, you know. And thank God, I'm not really, I thank God, anywhere that they preach the gospel and people get saved, hallelujah, see. But I understand what this means. I can't go back to that. Just because they're my kinfolk. But notice, because they had that attitude, Jesus was too familiar. See? They thought they knew him. All they knew was Jesus according to the flesh. They did not know Jesus according to the spirit. They didn't know him at all. But he could there do no mighty work. <laughs> now, I love how this is worded. He couldn't do any mighty work, except that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. That would be a mighty work. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Every church I've been to, practically, that would be a mighty work, you know? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. And notice this verse, he marveled because of their unbelief. I wonder how many times he's done that with me. Marveled at my unbelief. But the cure is the next statement. And he went about the villages doing what? Faith comes it, teaching. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Previews. Previews of coming attractions. When Jesus uh, <clears throat> saw the multitudes. And they'd already been with him several days. But he looked and he said he was moved with compassion for them. Because they were like sheep scattered with no shepherd. Remember what he prayed? He said, now pray that the Lord of the harvest... That he'll send laborers into the harvest. And the very next chapter, there should be no chapter heading there. The very next chapter is when he first sends out the twelve. 
And he tells us their names. And wouldn't you know, Judas is one of them. I've, I've, there's a whole message there. Judas was one of the twelve. And he starts telling them what their assignment is. And now, in their case, they were to go strictly stay within Israel. Later on, the gospel is open to the Gentiles. But right then, Israel was the only nation on earth that had this covenant with God. But what he tells them is, preach the kingdom. He is not going with them physically. He's sending them two by two ahead of him. Preach the kingdom. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leper. Cast out devils. Get this. Raise the dead. Even at that early stage. He says, don't take, don't take any money for it. Freely you've received. Freely give. Hallelujah. That's the Lord telling him I'm doing the best that I can. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just thankful it's not my phone this time. <laughs> Remember that time it, mine, did, mine did that and I slid it all the way across over and everything. <laughs> Have mercy that he may be merciful to you. Anyway. Hallelujah. <laughs> See, now what's going to happen now? You, you, this is a good message. I'm enjoying it. The day of you coming and hearing good messages and no change happening. Those days are over. Your accountability factor is going up. My accountability factor is going up. Hmm. I, what I feel like right now is I'm, the Holy Spirit is running and I'm hanging on by his coattails. I'm just hanging on. I'm trying to not miss anything, you know. But I'm trying not to stop when he's running. You know what that means? It's easy to stop and just teach what I already know. But he's instructing. He's instructing here, see. Yes, sir. So the cure is teaching. You have to be patient with people. And he's had us here praying. Part of that is he, uh, the prayer and the fasting all of these years really has had more to do with you because he's trying to make you unoffendable and not so touchy. Mike, come help me a minute. I've, I've, done, I've taught this many times, but it, it, see, this is amongst his family and his friends, and they're offended at him. And it's so easy to go, well, fooey on you, you know, you know. But, and I'm not going to read it tonight, but y'all know the story in, in uh, uh, Luke 6, where at the end of it, Jesus says, why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And then David have us back up to verse 27. Well, here, I say unto you, the, here are some of his sayings. Love your enemies, and I can't quote it exactly, but do good to them that despise you and pray for those that despitefully use you. You know how it goes. And if he takes away your money. So he gave me this little visual, you know. So here's the evil guy. <laughs> this is the, Mike's the evil, mean guy, you know. So he's slapping me across the face, you know, and he's ch choking me, but take him. <laughs> and he's treating me ugly, and he's taking, oh, hit me in the stomach. He took away my money. And, and, <laughs> and he's walking off with it. Go ahead, walk off with it. He's walking off with my, and I'm not even supposed to go after him. See? Now, when, come back now. Choke me, choke me again. Choke me again. Uh, uh, in this situation, how do we normally pray? Oh, God, help me. Oh, God, I'm in such trouble. Oh, God, help me. Who is it? If we're the ones saved, if God's looking down from heaven at this situation, and you're the Christian, you're the one on your way to heaven. From, get me, from God's point of view, who's in trouble here? Me. It's this guy. This is the one going to hell. Yeah. And all these years, all this prayer, all this fasting has been trying to strip us of the, the flesh, the part of us that's offendable, the part of us that cares more about self than it does about him. And he says, pray for that guy. If he needs the money that bad, just let him walk off with it. God, that's really the promise of Luke 6, 38. Yeah, he may, he may walk off with your money. I, God, it's like you had this ironclad guarantee. God says, he may walk off with your money. I say, I will speak to the hearts of other men. 
Whatever he took from you, I'll give it back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. You will never be permanently diminished for extending my love and my grace and my gospel to the unbeliever. God, give me, give me that. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. That's, so Jesus went about, he didn't get offended. They got offended at him, but he did not get offended. And he, so what's the cure? He knows what the cure for unbelief is. Teaching. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. You've got to be long-suffering with people. You've got to be, they may call you everything but a Christian. And, and it's okay. Sometimes you will get angry. He made a cord of whips and drove them out of the, drove them out of the temple, you know. But it's got to be his anger in us. Man's anger does not work the righteousness of God. His anger does. That's why the Bible says, be you angry and sin not. There is that. You can be angry and not even sin. Hey, you can. <laughs> How do you think the tone of voice was? You whitewashed tombstones. <laughs> you brood of vipers. Is that the way you think it was? You whitewashed tombstones, you brood of vipers. You travel earth and land to make one disciple. And when you do, you make him twice the son of hell that you are yourselves. You know, Boy, I, I can just see the fire in his eyes. Can't you? Can't you? You know, That's being angry and sinning not. He is trying to rescue those old boys from hell right there. And they thought they had it all together. He was talking to the Pharisees, the most religious bunch of the day, the ones everyone looked up to. And he's doing his best to rescue them from hell. And it's not always goody goody two shoes. They may want to, and they may want to kill you too. And you still do what? Pray for them, love them, do good to them. Trust God, even when it comes to your finances. Trust him. My Bible still says the cattle, the gold and the silver, it all belongs to him. Hallelujah. Trust me, he can get it to you. He can get it to you, whatever you need. Okay, we're not going to near make it. We've got three minutes here. <laughs> Let's come on down. Go down to uh, Hebrews. Let's look at this. Now, in the context, this letter to the Hebrews is really talking to them about not recanting their belief in Jesus and going back to believing in the law, to trusting in the law. I know in the context, but to the prayer center this year, I'm going to give you four verses, one, two, three, four here. Four verses that I know these are verses for us this year in the now. First one is Hebrews 3, verse 12. And really, you have all, this, we could almost, we should make little plaques of this verse and give it to you because you're still here. See, look at, look at this. Hebrews 3.12. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. There's that word unbelief. In departing from the living God. The fact that you're here. Did you know how many have departed? And again, we love them. The door is wide open to them. Uh, I, I don't consider them traitors. I consider them casualties of war. And I think that's the way God looks at it, too. They've been wounded, but they can be rescued. And I believe many of them will come back once the revival really begins to break out. Okay? All right? We're not going to, we have not departed, and we will not depart from the living God. Amen? Okay? This, the second one, chapter 3, verse 19. So that we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Now, in the context, he's going all the way back to when they spied out the land. They saw the giants were there. Their mistake, I mean, the giants were there. I mean, they weren't like making up lies. The giants were there. They were warlike and a fierce people. I mean, Israel had been slaves for 400 years. They didn't know much about war. And here you have this giant warlike people. But where they made their mistake is they... They looked at the natural circumstances and they measured it according to their own ability, not according to God's ability. And that's where the unbelief comes in. That's exactly what Ruth, that's what the enemy was trying to get to Ruthie to do. No, you're too old. You're too crippled. 
You're too this, you're too that. You know, he's trying to get her to measure the, the job and look at herself. It, his tactics have not changed. And he's trying to do exactly that. And they could not enter in because of their unbelief. Unbelief is when God says you can and you say you can't. That's why those personal prophecies, well, you gotta, you gotta see this. The lion, it is a lion clock, you know. <laughs> Did you know somebody got Dave one that had a lion's face on it? A lion clock? <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Go to uh, Romans 4. Just, I want you to see this verse, Romans 4. Ruthie quoted it this morning. I'm a big believer in writing in your Bible. Romans 4, 17, look at this verse. How anybody could come against the blueprint. I, I, I don't understand that at all. You know, she talked about the wolf in sheep's clothing. You don't need to pay attention. Abraham is called the father of us all. The father of the faith. Look at this, Hebrews 4, 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations, according, now notice, according to that which was spoken, under, you ought to underline that, according to that which was spoken, and in the margin right there, write blueprint. Abraham's blueprint was, so shall thy seed be. That's where he was to focus, looking at the stars of heaven, looking at the sand in the desert, focus on that, and then say nothing but that. Say what God said. That is exactly our assignment this year. That is your, and whatever he has said to you personally, now we're not all called... As far as I know, I'm not called to, a, to uh, win Germany. I'm called to help, you know. But if he tells me to go to Germany, I, I, you know, to go, I, what I'm saying is we've all got our part. You see what I'm saying? You've got to find your part. But that, a lot of that comes through those words that come to you. And that is your blueprint. Whether you heard it directly, whether you heard it through Pastor Dave, but if it's a real word from God, it's no less than you standing right in front of Jesus and him saying that to you. How can you not pay attention to that? that? That is your life right there. That is your life. And you can't go do something else and offer it to him as a sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You've got to do what he had called you to do. I, it won't do for me to go be an evangelist if he's called me to be a teacher. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I've by the way, I've tried it anyway. I don't have any anointing there anyhow. <laughs> I mean, I can give my testimony and I can share things, you know, but I go, the guy that led me to the Lord, y'all have met Michael. Trust me, Michael Muccio can win more people to Jesus almost asleep than I can on purpose. I mean, he, he has a gifting and a calling for that, you know. It's like people almost come up to him and go, what must I do to be saved? I mean, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and it happens everywhere he goes. He didn't have, it's just who he is. Okay, I'll quit. Hallelujah. <laughs> that verse, I want to get all four of these in. We do not want, we don't not. We do not want to be people like verse 19 that could not enter in because of unbelief. Don't measure the giants against you. Don't measure the circumstances against your strength. Measure the circumstances based on, your, on God and his strength and what he has said to you. Mm. Look at Hebrews 4, verse 6. Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Well, we are going to enter all the way in because we are a people who believe. He's been dealing with unbelief through all these years of prayer and fasting. Now is the time to enter in. He's warned us, prepared us, and told us. This is the year of power. This is also the year of action. Amen? All right, in verse, you're in chapter 4, look at verse 11. Now, 
The Holy Ghost is so artful in his mastery of words. Look at how he crafts this. Let us labor, therefore, labor, therefore, to enter into this rest. <laughs> Work really hard at it. You have nothing more important to do than to finally come to rest in your knowledge. I am who he says I am. I can do what he says I can do. I have what he says I have. What he spoke to me in that blueprint, that's exactly the way it's going to be. There is a laboring to enter into that rest. But all the devil really has is Mark 4. Cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, problems, you know, persecutions and afflictions. That's just trouble, you know, trying to get you to focus on anything else. That word that Ruthie read, I remember, divert, 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 four times. Divert, divert. That's really all he has is Mark 4. Trying to get you away from the focus. Laser focus, you remember? Laser focus. We're not going to fall after that same example of unbelief. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that?